dispute resolution and transactional certainty. We are all familiar with the role that courts play in resolving disputes. Indeed, courts are accredited for securing contract rights and assuring the transactional certainty we believe is necessary to foster investment and stimulate economic growth. And the creation of state-sponsored courts is considered a major development in economic history. Yet we also know that courts, in fact, resolve very few disputes, and most disputes are resolved extra-legally. As Stuart McCauley famously observed in the American Sociological Review in 1963, quote, disputes are frequently settled without reference to the contract or potential or actual legal sanctions. How disputes are resolved and how contract rights are secured without court-facilitated dispute resolution has been a great area of interest to institutional economists and legal scholars alike. This lecture provides an overview and taxonomy of extra-legal dispute resolution mechanisms, and it provides a framework to understand and distinguish among the private legal systems heralded in the literature. Macaulay's article triggered an outpouring of scholarly fascination for the world of extra-legal enforcement. This literature has uncovered two prominent but distinct species of extra-legal mechanisms that secure transactions between commercial parties. The first category involves parties operating in the shadow of the law. And the second involves institutions that enable order without law. Mark Galanter, writing in 1981, deserves credit for popularizing the proverbial shadow of the law. Professor Galanter used the shadow metaphor to argue that the law's primary impact on human behavior is through its casting a shadow. And, quote, the principal contribution of courts to dispute resolution is providing a background of norms and procedures against which negotiations and regulation in both private and governmental settings take place. Galanter's shadow builds off the Coase theorem, which states that private parties will engage in efficient bargaining if they have well-defined legal entitlements. In short, Coasean bargaining takes place within the law's shadow. The growing and elaborate world of arbitration also falls neatly within Professor Galanter's shadow. Arbitration and other forms of alternative dispute resolution are creatures of contract in which parties agree to resolve their disputes according to an alternative process. One could think of arbitration clauses and other contract mechanisms as a product of Kosian bargaining from defined contract rules. The difference is in the formality of the mechanisms. Once parties understand how a state court would handle a dispute, they can craft alternative rules that are mutually preferable to state-made contract and procedure law. Those rules can be spontaneous, like the merchants in Macaulay's study, or extremely formal, like many forms of modern arbitration. Robert Ellickson coined the phrase order without law in his 1990 book that documented the cooperative norms and behaviors of ranchers in agrarian Shasta County. Ellickson found that ranchers that allow their cattle to stray and cause damage to neighbors' property suffered from scorn and exclusion, even though they would not be held liable in any formal legal action brought in a state-sponsored court. Ellickson's book earns its title because neither state property law nor its shadow played a role in securing order. Order and enforcement of community norms arose entirely from indigenous community institutions. In order without law systems, extra-legal rewards and punishments replace state-sponsored legal coercion and thereby are a wholesale alternative to 
and not an extension of formal legal sanctions. Scholars in multiple fields have devoted growing attention to extra-legal systems that rely on indigenous institutions. Recent scholarship has examined 11th century Mediterranean traders, medieval Europe's merchant guilds, Mexican Jesuits in 1830s California, mountain shepherds in Torbal, Switzerland, fishmongers in Congolese villages, fishermen off the coast of Monterey, and old-style Jewish diamond merchants in the heart of modern New York. Common to these case studies is their focus on communities that instituted their own mechanisms for rewarding cooperative behavior and penalizing violations of norms. In these merchant communities, shunning, expulsion, and coordinated boycotts are the sources of coercion that secure ongoing cooperation. And these order without law systems also vary in their formality. Shasta County relied only on gossip and the natural spread of information. In contrast, the diamond dealers of New York institute elaborate systems to determine and publicize who is at fault in a particular dispute. Yet the source of coercion, both among Shasta County ranchers and New York's diamond tares, is the same. Neither community relies on court sanctions. Both instead enforce contract and property rights with extra-legal social sanctions. In sum, two significant dimensions of variation have emerged in the literature. The first concerns the source of coercion that secures transactional compliance, in which some systems rely ultimately on the state whereas others rely on private power. The second is the degree of formality that characterizes the dispute resolution and adjudicatory systems. The institutional features of these assorted mechanisms can thus be summarized in the following schema. This framework helps distinguish among the alternative dispute resolution mechanisms. It also illustrates that the substantive rules of alternative dispute resolution systems are less important than the enforcement mechanisms that underlie and support these systems. It therefore is meaningful that despite appearances, private legal systems belong squarely in the order without law category. Accordingly, their economic significance lies in their institutional foundations and not in the substantive law that they offer.